Hello everybody, JP from JP's Aviation here, and welcome back to another video. Whether you know it or not, you've probably flown on a plane built by Bombardier, a Canadian aircraft manufacturer that at one point was competing with Airbus and Boeing in the commercial aviation market as the third largest manufacturer. And this wasn't that long ago, as in the late 2010s, they had a commercial aircraft portfolio that covered almost all areas of the regional jet market. And they had a better portfolio than their main competitor, Embraer. However, by the end of 2020, the manufacturer had completely pulled out of the commercial aviation market as the last CRJ rolled off the line, ending their nearly 30-year run of regional jet production. Now the manufacturer solely focuses on business jets. So how did the world's largest regional manufacturer, maker of the world's most hated airplane and one of the world's most beloved, have such a quick fall from aviation prominence? Well, the answer is actually extremely complicated. So we have to go by each of the three main programs that they produced over their 30 year run and see how they left the aircraft portfolio. The C-Series was the company's most recent endeavor. However, it was the first that it would give away to a different manufacturer. The CS100 and the CS300 proved to be a huge headache to Bombardier. The family should have been a huge hit, however. The C-Series offers a 25% lower fuel burn per seat than any other airliner in its category. It has a 700 mile range greater than the re-engined E195 and has a wider cabin than any other regional jet, even over aircraft like the 737 MAX 7 and the A319neo. In spite of these advantages and a ton of others, Bombardier lacked the resources and negotiating power and even the physical infrastructure to compete with the Airbus Boeing monopoly. Perhaps the most well-known part of the C-Series problem for Bombardier was the dumping allegations by Boeing. Boeing alleged that Delta's 2016 order for the CS100 was dumped, meaning that they were sold to Delta for less than the production cost and it interferes with competition in the US, Boeing 737 MAX 7, which Delta made clear that they didn't want. The 75 CS100s were sold for $19 million apiece, while the production cost was $32 million. Because of this, the US put a 300% tariff on the order. By the time that the US government had overturned the tariff, seeing that the MAX 7 wasn't threatened by the sale of the C-Series, Airbus would take a 50.01% stake in the program and would rename it to the A220 in 2017. The Airbus partnership would help give credibility to the A220 and expand its customer base, as well as being able to avoid the tariff if it was still in place because it was going to be built at the Mobile factory in Alabama. Since the Airbus takeover, the A220 has amassed a total of 785 orders, and the production line in Mobile, Alabama has officially opened up for United States A220 customers. In 2020, Bombardier sold its remaining 25% of the program to Airbus, officially pulling out of the A220 program. The next program Bombardier sold was probably their least known program, the Dash 8. The Dash 8 is a turboprop that was originally produced by de Havilland Canada, but was sold to Bombardier in 1992 after Boeing owned it for a short period of time. The Dash 8 had a successful run with Bombardier. They would add two family members to the Dash 100 and the Dash 200 that de Havilland originally made. These would be the Dash 300 and the Dash 400. The Dash 400 proved to be the most popular variant with 645 orders, and the family had a total of 1,316 orders. Bombardier would end production of the three smallest variants by 2010, leaving only the 400 still in production. Sales started to slow by 2018 to the ATR family because they were cheaper than the Dash 400. Bombardier would sell the program to Longview Aviation Capital Corporation, and they would bring back the de Havilland name. Right now, there are just over 50 Dash 400s in the backlog. However, as of 2020, production has stopped. De Havilland has talked about bringing the plane back into production and even starting a new line to replace 50-seat jets in the United States. However, right now, this is just talk and nothing is confirmed. And lastly, we have the CRJ family, the CRJ 100, 200, 700, 900, and 1000. In 1987, Bombardier bought Canadair, which was developing the CRJ 100 at the time, and later the CRJ 200. 
A few years after the acquisition, Bombardier would start to develop the CRJ700 and CRJ900. These programs proved to be immensely successful, with almost 2,000 built making it the best-selling regional jet family of all time beating out the Embraer ERJ family and E-Jet family. It became apparent though in 2018 after the sale of the Dash 8 that Bombardier was looking to get rid of the program because the backlog was shrinking and the program was no longer making money. This is where Mitsubishi Aircraft Corporation comes in. They decided to take on the CRJ family in 2020. At the time of the Mitsubishi buyout, there were still CRJ 900s on order. Bombardier would produce the remaining backlog until the last one was delivered to SkyWest in 2020. Right now, Mitsubishi provides service to CRJ customers. They too have had talks of bringing the aircraft back into production as there are really no other regional jets in production right now other than the E-175. But that too is just talk and nothing is confirmed. In conclusion, Bombardier's departure from the commercial aviation market can be contributed to a complex mix of factors. The company's lack of resources, negotiating power, and physical infrastructure prevented them from effectively competing with the Airbus Boeing duopoly, which ultimately led to the sale of the C-Series to Airbus. In regards to the CRJ family and the Dash 8 family, the decline in regional jet sales and the implementation of the Scopes Clause by the United States, which restricts the number and size of regional jets that regional airlines can fly like SkyWest, also played a part in Bombardier's exit from the market. While the company may no longer produce regional jets, it continues to focus on small business jets like the Challenger. Despite its departure, Bombardier's contributions to aviation won't be forgotten, especially the CRJ200. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment about what your favorite Bombardier aircraft is. I'll see you all next time on JP's Aviation. Goodbye.